Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first in a new series of tutorials about how to craft customized worlds in the latest versions of Minecraft Java Edition. This first part is going to be about dimension types, and then we're going to get into the more nitty gritty of custom world generation settings in coming episodes. I want to preface this by saying that customized worlds are an experimental feature and things are going to change. That means that these videos may not work on the latest versions when you come across them, if you come across them a little bit later. So down in the video description of every video, there will be a verified version. In that version, these things are guaranteed to work. And then, of course, as we go along with the tutorial series, I'll update you when things change, because they will. Anyway, to get into the very basics, how do you make customized worlds? Well. World customization is available through Minecraft data packs, just like functions or tags or anything else. To be really useful, you'd probably want to add your data pack before you start a world for the first time. Now, currently, there are two new folders in data packs that you can add things into. One is called Dimension Type, and the other is called Dimension. So, what is the distinction between a dimension and its type then? Well, a dimension type has all of the properties of a dimension that are unrelated to its terrain. So, for instance, there are no raids in the nether. Even if the nether was to be a super flat world or floating islands like the end, there would never be any raids. Meanwhile, in the overworld, beds work and the level of ambient light is lower and it has skylight. Properties like that you can see that if you start a world normally, if you start a buffet world, or if you start a super flat world, or if you start an amplified world, the terrain generation changes, but the properties of the overworld world are still the same. Those are the properties of the dimension type. Alright, so when you make your custom dimension, you select a type. There are four built-in types. They are overworld, the nether, the end, and overworld caves. The last one there is used for buffet worlds for the cave type world. They are generated sort of with the overworld settings, but still with the nether terrain generator as its base. Now, one thing to note before we get into the fields of dimension types is that you can currently not replace these built-in types. You can add your own and when you set up your dimensions you can refer to custom dimension types, but you can't outright change the properties of the overworld type right now. That doesn't mean that you can't make an overworld that isn't of the overworld type, but you can't change the built-in overworld type, if that makes sense. Let's go through the different fields that you can tinker with in a dimension type. Let's start with the kind of environmental properties, beginning with ambient light. And I'm gonna, as we go through these, use the built-in dimension types as a reference. So ambient light is zero in the overworld and in the end, and 0.1 in the nether. This is a float value between 0 and 1, and it affects how the lighting or shading gradient is set up for block rendering. A somewhat related thing to that is has skylight. Obviously, if the dimension has skylight, then there is light coming from above in the daytime. The flip side of this is the next field called has ceiling, and this doesn't mean that a ceiling is generated simply means that the game will assume that the ceiling is there for the purpose of various different things, such as maps behaving differently, or spawners not attempting to spawn things on top. And as for these in the default dimensions, the has skylight one is true in the overworld only, and has ceiling is true in the nether only, as you might expect. There's also a logical height value that is 256 in the overworld and in the end, and 128 in the default nether. This isn't used for all that much in the game currently, but if you have a logical height set, then for instance, portals will not generate above that limit. There's also an optional field called fixed time. This does not exist in the default overworld. It's set to 18,000 in the default nether and to 6,000 in the default end. Another couple of settings for these dimension types is how respawn blocks work. They are bed works and respawn anchor works. Both of these are booleans. And of course, bed works is true in the default overworld and false in the other ones. And respawn anchor works is true in the default nether and false in the other ones. Should be fairly self-explanatory. Then there are a couple of mob related things too. There's piglin safe, which is obviously true in the nether default and false in the other one. So whether piglins and hoglins will zombify is controlled by that value. There's has raids, which will tell you if a raid can spawn on a village in that dimension or not. 
Notably, has raids is true in the default overworld and end, but not in the default nether. Then there are some other things related to how blocks works and such. So there's an infinity burn field. This is a string and what it represents is a resource location for a tag. So the default one for the overworld is Minecraft colon infinity burn overworld. And for the default nether, Minecraft colon infinity burn nether and Minecraft colon infinity burn end for the end. This signifies a block tag that tells on which blocks fire will burn forever. There's also an ultra worm field that controls liquid behavior. Basically, if you put down water in a dimension that is ultra warm, then it will evaporate. If you put down lava in another dimension that is ultra warm, it will flow faster, just like the nether. There's a shrunk field that is true in the default nether. It basically means that when portals connect, then they will do the whole divide by or multiply distance by eight. And finally, there's a natural field. Now, currently the natural field does all kinds of things like determine whether a clock will work in that dimension. So for the default dimension types, this is true for the overworld, but not the nether or the end. An interesting side here is that the overworld caves type is basically the overworld, except it also has a ceiling. It has both a skylight and ceiling. Now, if you want to try this out, you will also have to try it in conjunction with a dimension. You can't only change a dimension type because, like I said, you can't replace the built-in ones at this point. So what then is a dimension? Well, a dimension is a pair of two things. It is a type, which is the things that we just discussed. You can put in one of the default ones like Minecraft colon overworld, or you can put in a custom one that you added with your own namespace colon whatever the heck. The other and perhaps more interesting part of the dimension is the generator field. The generator specifies how the world terrain is generated. There are currently three types of generators. They are Minecraft colon flat for flat worlds, obviously, Minecraft colon debug for the debug world and Minecraft colon noise for basically everything else. So the generator is a JSON object that has some fields and the fields will depend on the type. So first you specify the type. If you put in Minecraft colon debug here, you get the debug world generator. It's not terribly interesting and it also doesn't have any settings with it. The flat generator has one other field and it's called settings. And that in turn is also an object and it has a lot of goodies in it. Here you can specify the biome, which is a reference to one of the biomes. So for instance, you can specify Minecraft colon planes here. It also has two booleans specifying lakes and features for whether to generate lakes or features into the world. Then it has two more detailed things. One is the layers, and that is the details of the layers, just like you would set it in the flat world screen. So each layer is a combination of a height and a block. The block is the block type and the height is the number of blocks that layer is high. The other interesting thing is structures. And the structures piece is a little weirdly separated into strongholds and then the rest of the structures. So for strongholds, you can specify distance, spread and count. And for the rest of the structures, there's an object that contains a mapping from the structure name to the settings for that structure. And each structure then has spacing, separation and salt values, where the spacing and separation controls the spread of them in the world. And the salt is kind of an additional piece of seed, you could say. So basically, for the same values of spacing and separation, the villages, in this case, would be spread out the same kind of rough way in the world, but they would be in different configurations depending on what the salt is. For the spacing and separation, you could consider the separation the minimum distance in chunks between those structures, and the spacing some form of average distance. Now, for our final generator type, it is the noise generator type. And this is the most interesting one, has the most settings. And we'll go through the basic settings here, but there are many more things to cover here that we'll go into in the detailed video about biome sources. But the basics are that if you specify the type as Minecraft colon noise, then you get some new fields to play with. One is the seed, where you can specify a seed if you want for that dimension specifically. One is called the settings, and that is either a reference to one of the default ones, like Minecraft colon nether, Minecraft colon overworld, or Minecraft colon end. Now, note that these are not the types that we talked about before. They're settings for the generator. The preset types that you can put in there are overworld, amplified, nether, 
end caves and floating islands. However, you don't have to specify a reference there, you can also specify an object, in which case you can specify all the settings by yourself. When you do this, you get a lot of different possibilities to play with, but you also have to get the format right. And the feedback from the game currently is not really the best. Anyway, that is way out of scope for this introductory video, but what you're seeing is an example of the full settings in play, and I'll leave a link in the video description to this example. The last field for the noise type generator is the biome source field. This is another object with a bunch of settings for it, again depending on the type of the biome source. The role of the biome source is to determine the layout of the biomes in the world. There are five types of biome source. They are fixed, multi-noise, checkerboard, vanilla, layered, and the end. Again, we will not be going into the full details, but I'll give you an overview here. The fixed type biome source has one field. It is the biome field referencing the biome, and that gives you a world that is all one biome. The checkerboard type biome source has two fields. It is biomes, which is a list of biomes, and scale, which is an integer between 0 and 62. As the name implies, this gives you a checkerboard of different biomes. Vanilla layered is basically the default overworld biome source. It has the fields seed, large biomes as a boolean, and legacy biome init layer as a boolean. The end biome source has a single field that is seed, and obviously that generates the biome layout of the end. And finally, multi noise biome source, and this is the source used in the new nether. This one is a little more complex, it has a seed and a list of biomes, and each of those biomes comes with a biome reference and a group of climate parameters. We'll be getting into the details of how this works in a future video, because this is fairly complex, but incredibly powerful, and you can create a fantastically varied world using the multi-noise biome source. But again, that is for a future video, I hope that you've gotten a good and rough understanding of how to begin the process of creating a custom world. But that was enough for our first step on our journey towards crafting custom worlds. Next up we're going to look at that multi-noise biome source, we'll look at all the noise settings down the line, but also as new things get added or changed in the experimental support for this feature, we'll be following up on that and covering new topics as well. If you're not subscribed to the channel and want to follow along with the series, then hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and select all to get notified when the new videos are out. My name is Slice Slime, thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.